Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we saw how to start up Cassandra as a Docker container using Docker Desktop. Then we created a key space, a simple table to experiment with the running Cassandra. Now, in this example, we will create another table that we will use in the Java code when we set up the Spring Boot project. So let's do that. We'll go to the documentation and copy this one to create a simple key space cycling with a replication factor one because we have a single node running so the replication factor would be just one let's copy this one and hit enter and we have created this key space cycling in this cassandra instance now let's create the table as well and this time we'll create a bit more mature table this one cyclist category in the cycling key space and notice the columns we have four columns id points category last name then we have the composite key which is a combination of category and points now the first one will act as the partition key which will decide how the data is spread across different nodes in this case because we have a single node so all the data will go to the single node but this is the partition key and the last column points will be the clustering column which will define the sorting of the records and notice this clause which says with clustering order by on this column points in the descending order so that means when we are inserting the data the data will be stored on the disk in the descending order of points so copy this one and create this table hit enter and we have created this cyclist category table in the cycling key space let's do a quick select star to verify that it does not have any data copy paste and right now this table is empty now we will set up a spring boot project and then we'll write some java code to insert some data in this cassandra table here i am in my intellij and i'm going to use my spring initializer plugin in the intellij to create the spring boot project it's a maven project group this one artifact cassandra 101 and let's change the package name mean hit next now we need to add the dependencies for cassandra we simply need a single dependency which is this one spring data for apache cassandra and everything else will be taken care of by the spring boot hit next create the project and let it set up the project it will download the dependencies from the internet and it will set up this basic maven project which is the spring boot project okay now that it has set up the project let's go and check the pom.xml there is this one important dependency which is spring boot starter data cassandra and in the source folder we have the empty application.properties file and in this folder we have the main class which is annotated as spring boot application we have this project now how do we start with cassandra same as any other spring data project where we have the database and the tables we create an entity then we create the repository we map the entity with the database table and then we write some code to insert the data or to read the data using that repository and the same thing we will do in case of cassandra here the data store is Cassandra and we have this table, we have this key space. Now we need to provide some information to Spring Boot so that it can connect with the Cassandra, the running instance of Cassandra. Then we'll write an entity, we'll map that entity to the Cassandra table. Then we'll write some code using the repository to interact with the database. So let's start with the configuration, Cassandra configuration. Now in any Spring Boot project, how do we generally pass the connection configuration or any other kind of configuration? We use the application.properties file. In this case also, we will use the application.properties file to pass on the connection parameters. Let me copy and paste. Yeah, these are some of the properties that we are going to use in this demo. And not all of them are required. For example, these are good to have, but you can ignore them for the demo purpose. This one is for testing only. We don't create schema on demand in production most of the time, or we always have the schema in production. So we don't need to create one if not exists. So this is only for the demo purpose. The important configuration is A, the local data center. 
and how do we find the data center if i go back to the running instance let me exit from the sql sh and if i run no tool status command it will give me the data center name for my running instance it could be different for you so we just need to copy this data center name and provide it here all right let's go back to the sql sh okay the second property that we need to provide is key space name in this case the key space name is cycling i believe let me verify yeah this one cycling so we need to provide the name here we don't need to provide the connection parameter because by default the cassandra is running on the local host with default ports and spring boot will by default try to connect on the local host on the default port and that's why it will be able to establish a connection so we don't need to provide that the next step is to create the entity and map it with the cassandra table so we'll create a new package we will name is entity and in this package we'll create the entity class cyclist category let me verify cyclist category yeah and let's create the entity now this entity would have these properties so let me copy the properties for now like this it's going to be a string property then we have the point which is of type integer so we'll say private in points then we have the id which is of type uuid so we'll say private uuid and it comes from java.util and then we have the last name of type text which is private string like this okay okay let's create the getters and setters as well let's create the constructor we'll create the default constructor as well and then a parameterized constructor with all the properties like this and we'll also create the two string method using all the required properties okay now that we have created the pojo the next step is to map this pojo with the cassandra table and we know that uh, using spring data jpa we generally use the at the rate entity annotation but when we are working with cassandra we use table which is coming from org spring framework dot data dot cassandra so this is the annotation that we need to use now we can also pass on the table name just to be sure so i'm going to do that like this so we are saying this is the pojo this is the entity which is mapped to this cassandra table all right now if you notice we are using a composite primary key which is a combination of category and points these two properties are part of the composite key which actually form the primary key of this table so how do we define such a composite key when we work with spring data jpa we generally use at the rate id annotation and at the rate generated value because ids are mostly auto generated or auto incremented at least for demo applications but in this case we have a composite key now in order to configure a composite key using spring cassandra we need to use another annotation and for that i'll go to the documentation of spring cassandra here you can see if you have a single column primary key then we can use at the rate primary key and we can simply mention the column name 
and that's how we define a primary key but it's a bit different when we are dealing with composite keys like in this table so here you can see that the primary key is a combination of three columns the last column event time is the clustering column with an explicit ordering defined as descending so there are two ways to configure or map such composite keys and we will see both of them from the documentation the first one is to use the primary key column so we use this annotation on all the columns which are part of the composite keys in this case there are three columns person id event code event time so we are using this annotation on three properties person id event code event time we need to provide or map the column name the correct column name ordinal which is the sequence so person id is the first one event code is the second column in the sequence and then the type so the columns which are part of the partition key we define the type as partitioned and the columns which are part of the clustering key we define the primary key type as clustered and we can also define the ordering in this case descending because that's what we provided when we created the table so we can use primary key column on individual properties to map the composite primary key the second way is to use primary key class in that case we create a new class with the properties which are part of the composite key we use the same primary key column but on that class we use the primary key class to define that this class will act as a composite key and then we use this class within the entity all right so there are two ways in this demo because this looks simple so we will simply use primary key column not primary key class but you should be aware that you can do that so let me copy this one and we'll use the same annotation in our example and if we revisit category is the partition key and points is the clustering column with an ordering which is descending on the category we'll put this primary key column okay and the name of the column is category same so we don't really need to provide it but we can provide the ordinal which is the sequence and primary key type partitioned because this is the partition key for the points we can copy and paste and check the column name points the name is same so we don't need to provide the column name but we need to change the primary key type to clustered and we also need to provide the ordering descending okay using primary key column we have mapped the composite primary key what else do we need actually nothing because column names are matching id and last name so we don't really need to do anything else we have mapped the entity now let's create the repository create a new package name it repo and in that repo we'll create a new interface we'll name it cyclist category repository and this repository will extend map id cassandra repository and the reason behind this is because we are using composite key so using map id cassandra repository really makes it easier to map the composite key which we are defining using at the rate primary key class or primary key column so we just need to provide the entity to this repository and it can scan and find all the attributes of the composite key so we will simply pass it the entity which is cyclist category and that's it let's go to the main class and we'll add some code here to trigger the cassandra code to do that we'll create a new beam of type application runner and to this pin we'll add a new dependency of the repository this one like this and by defining an application runner pin we are telling spring boot to execute this code before you complete the execution of main method and Spring Boot will see that this 
application runner has a dependency on this repository so it will initialize this repository inject the dependency to the application runner and we can use this repository in this method for now let's log the repository and verify if this setup is working fine so let's run the program it has printed the instance of repository we don't see any error so it looks fine now let's try to add some records using the same repository to do that we need to create new objects of cyclist category let's do that even equals to new cyclist category the first argument is category let's name it cat1 the second argument is integer which is points so we'll say 4 the third argument is id so let's generate a random uuid and the last column is last name so we'll say l name this is the first cyclist category and notice that the composite key is a combination of category and points and we have defined the ordering in descending order on points let's create a new object and we'll use the same category but we'll change the points to let's say six a random uuid and with a different last name and let's add third category as well and this time use a different category cat2 points could be same and with a different last name and now let's add all these records using the same repository so we'll say this repository dot save all and we'll pass a list list dot of even c2 and c3 we'll also add a logger here adding all and to fetch the records to verify that we inserted the data correctly we'll say fetching all and here we'll use the same repository and this time we will call the find all method for each and in this one we'll simply print all the records that we got back from the cassandra table so we created three categories then we are adding all these categories to the cassandra table using repository save all method and later we are trying to find or fetch all the records using the repository so let's execute the program and verify the output so it ran successfully we see adding all which means it added all the records to the cassandra table then we see fetching all it means it was able to fetch all the records from the cassandra table then it printed all these records one by one now we notice one thing this record which belongs to category 2 it has a single record in this category and we see it on the console but these two records which belong to category 1 they are sorted based on their points in descending order and that's what we defined when we created the table so we defined the ordering on the points in descending order because points is the clustering key and that's what we see here we don't need to apply the sorting the data is stored on the disk in the sorted order and that's what we see here we see this record first with point 6 and then this record and we can verify the same thing using the terminal if we run the select query from cycling dot cyclist category we see the same order for the category 1 this is the first record with point 6 and then we see the 4 in the descending order so that's pretty much it on the spring and cassandra as far as this demo is concerned we covered how to install cassandra we covered how to set up a spring boot project and work with a cassandra database and i hope it has given you enough motivation and background so you can explore cassandra and spring on your own as always don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future updates thanks for watching